Today we're going to look at the Picron E600 Portable Power Station. This power station features a 614 watt hour battery and has an output of 1200 watts continuous with three AC outlets. We're going to tear this one down, take a look at it and give it a full test. First things first, we're going to open the box. This is the official unboxing. We'll go through the specifications. I'm going to tear the unit down, show you guys the inside of it, do a quick look at that. Then we're going to give it a full charge and I'm going to try to overload this thing. Take it to the max. And I mean, I'm going to seriously put this thing into an overload condition and see what happens. So here's the unit. Inside there is the accessory pack and the unit itself. It weighs about 20 pounds, so about 10 kil kilos. Inside here is the power brick. 42 volts, that's 7 amps, will recharge in about 2.2 hours from either AC or from a generator. Included in the package, an MC4 charging cable, a car charging cable, and an Anderson solar charging cable. Solar charging times are 3 to 4 hours with a 200 watt panel, or 1.5 to 2.5 hours with a 400 watt panel. And you can also charge it from your car, it will take about 7 hours. Before I test, I'm going to tear the unit down because the battery right now is in a low state of charge. So this is about as safe as it gets. Uh, there's a lot of energy in here. I would not recommend opening these units up because this has enough energy to cause an explosion if you were to cause a short circuit. There's a lot of stored energy on a battery, but basically a couple screws on the top and the unit lifts apart just like that. We're going to take a look at the circuit board here. I'm going to remove the heat sink and stuff so we can look at the inverter and then we'll charge it up and see how it performs. The top board here, this is the DC board for the DC outputs, USB outputs, wireless charging, etc. And I believe it's also probably the charging board that controls the charging of the battery when you're charging it from solar or from the supplied AC adapter or DC adapter charger. Anyway, we're going to disconnect this DC board from the main board so that I can lift the DC board off and we can look at the AC inverter board that is under this one. First, we'll measure the battery voltage and uh, we get to 26 volts. Yeah, I put the probes on the other way, it doesn't matter here. 26 volts, this is in a discharge state, so the battery voltage will be a little bit higher when the cells are fully charged. I'm gonna disconnect the DC cords now and then we'll remove this top DC board so we can get a look at the AC power board below. Four screws and the DC board will lift off to reveal an even larger heat sink and the inverter board below. Main battery is still connected to the board through these large lug nuts and screws to the main inverter. Removal of the heat sink will reveal the inverter transformer and AC sine wave generation circuitry. Board looks to be really high quality and there's a conformal coating on it. This is to prevent moisture and dust and so forth from causing short circuits. You'll notice that there are three fans, two exhaust fans and one induction fan on the right side that's blowing on the heat sink as well as drawing the air out to keep the unit cool. The construction, as I think I previously mentioned, looked to be really high quality. I'm going to put the unit back together now and we're going to charge it up and then give it a full load on discharge and see how long it runs. Let me just throw the top back on. We can look down here though, we can we can take some of this off. I can separate it a bit so we can see here's the 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 uh, the controller for the battery management system right here. Bunch of I guess these are IGBTs, huge power conductor here and a bunch of fuses. See how many cells this has got, and it's got 
four across, and how many down? One, oh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, looks like eight that we've got across here that I can see. They're staggered. All of the inputs and outputs are on the front on the unit itself. You have a DC input, 12 to 18 volts. This is for charging from like a car battery or in your truck while it's locked. Guys, you can't really charge it in a big rig because they're on a 24 volt system. 12 to 18 volts input on this one, but 32 to 95 volts on that port. That's for like the AC charge pack and solar pack and so forth. Two buttons on the front. One to turn on the AC power and one to turn on the DC. So push and hold, and it tells me that my battery is only at 1%, which is good, because it's not it's not uh, shipped charged, which is good. So we can charge this up, and see DC, we turn on the DC by pushing this one, and that'll turn on the DC ports and of course the wireless charging. So if I take my phone and sit my phone on top of here, my phone should start charging, which it is. Is it fast charging or slow charging? Did we see? Fast wireless charging, so it says. So it'll take an hour and 29 minutes to charge my phone. So there you go, you got a phone charger as well. So in those power failures, you can charge your phone. All right, so battery's dead. It's got 1%, so we're gonna plug this unit in like that. It's telling me it's charging. I'm gonna turn off the AC. There we go, so now it's starting. So, timer is starting now. It tells me it's gonna take two hours and 20 minutes to charge. The light's gone red on the front here to indicate that it's charging. It's green when it's off, it's red when it's charging. So when this turns green, this will be fully charged. Again, it's telling me two hours and 20 minutes. We are charging it at 274 watts right now is the charging voltage. Okay, it looks like it just finished charging. The light has gone green. Two hours and 44 seconds is uh, where we're at. This number is still going down, so I get a feeling it's probably in trickle charge and it's gonna just continue to bring the cells up at a lower speed, a lower charge level that's not registering here. There we go. 100%, two hours and 23 minutes. No time left. 100%. I'm going to unplug the charger and we're going to turn on the AC. We'll take a look at the the waveform. So I'm going to turn on a load. The load I've just put on is 600 watts. According to the meter it's going to give me 90 minutes of run time. I'm going to turn this up. So here we're at 605 watts. Let's crank it to full power. 1,386 watts, it'll be 40 minutes or so of runtime. We'll start the timer. I'm gonna let this run until the battery runs out. 59.78 hertz, the sine wave still looks pretty darn good to me. 127.1 volts. So, time to let this run. You can see it's hot, it's got that heat gun running at full power so as I pass the nine minute mark the display shows 61% of the batteries remaining you'll notice that the DC output you've got it's got two USB-C one to 100 watt and one 18 watt as well as two 18 watt USB-A output in addition, the other DC outputs, of course, these are five amps a piece, and this one's a 10 amp output. Just rolled over 15 minutes, according to the display here, 14 minutes remaining, we're at 37%. This is ticking down faster than the minute so. And again, we're also drawing 1,380 watts. So it's rated at 1,200 watts, and we're drawing 1,389. 
but it's got uh, it's got peak power, it's got surge power. But even though we are drawing more power than it's rated at, it hasn't shut down. As you can see, it's been going now 16 minutes. It says there's 12 minutes remaining. I'm gonna let this thing see go right till it drops. Just for the hell of it, I just wanted to see what this does. So I dropped it down to 596 watts. I turned it to low for a minute. Of course, our time remaining went up to 22, and it shows the AC output we're at 50%. When I crank it back up, this will go back to 100%. So that's what this little gauge here tells you. This tells you what percentage of your maximum output you are drawing, and I'm at 100%. Fully loaded. And yet it hasn't even hiccup. The AC waveform is perfect. The inverter is warm, not hot. Just warm air. 16%, six minutes remaining, and it just shut off. So there you go, when it gets down to 16%, it shuts off. Uh, we ran for 20 minutes and 20 seconds or approximately. So now we know how long this will run at maximum power. This actually wasn't a dead battery shutdown. This was an over temperature shutdown as I got the battery too hot because I was drawing over the maximum power. It still ran for 20 minutes. So we got to let it cool down before we'll be able to charge so it. So time to plug it in and charge it up again. The charger should kick in momentarily. No, it won't because I've got the battery at its maximum temperature. So I'm going to have to let it cool for an hour or so and then it should charge. So I had to let the unit cool down because the batteries had uh, heated up from that big heavy discharge. So it wouldn't go into charge mode. It just sat there waiting. But after the unit cooled down for a while, the light turned on red and we're now charging at 274 watts with about two hours and 20 minutes remaining to bring the unit up to a full charge. So something to keep in mind, if you've been running it really hard, like I was, drawing maximum power, the battery is going to need to cool down because the cells internal, even though the air coming out of the, the inverter wasn't that hot, the actual cells themselves have temperature control. So because the cells had an elevated temperature, during discharge, it wouldn't go into the charge mode until the cells cooled down. So this is going to charge up now and should be able to run it again for another test, but I'm done with this one. I've had a look inside. Looks to be a winner. It's the first one I've been able to draw full power over the rated power without having to go into any fancy boost modes. And unlike other units, I don't have to use an app to crank up the power. And that's a big plus in my books, a standalone unit, no apps required. I'll put the link in the description. Thanks for watching.